Hi there, my name's Louise Devoy and I'm curator of the Royal Observatory at Greenwich and we're here live in the airy parlour in Flamsteed House, the oldest part of the observatory. So this year in 2018, it's a really important moment in women's history as we celebrate 100 years since the representation of the People's Act in 1918, which gave some women the right to vote for the very first time. And this is a really great opportunity for us to think about how women have been involved in the history of the Royal Observatory. So while we haven't had a female astronomer royal, women have been involved with the observatory right from the very beginning in 1675, whether it's living here as the wives, daughters and sisters of the Astronomers Royal, or even just from the 1819 onwards, actually working here um, as astronomers and human computers. So it's a really exciting moment to, to focus on that. And in this session, I'd like to focus on this lady here, Rashada Airy, the wife of the seventh Astronomer Royal, George Biddle Airy. And it's a really great love story, and it really gives us an idea of some of the involvement of the wives of the astronomers during this mid-Victorian period. So it's a really good story. So we can have a think about her story. Uh, so who was this lady? Where did she come from? Well, she was actually the eldest daughter of the Reverend Richard Smith, who was private chaplain to the Duke of Devonshire at Chatsworth House up in the Peak District. So Rashada grew up surrounded by this beautiful landscape and it was this beautiful area that attracted the attention of a young mathematics graduate called George Bidleri, who went there on a hiking holiday in the summer of 1824. Now at some point during the break he met the Reverend Richard Smith who kindly invited him back to the vicarage and as George recalls in his memoirs he walked into the dining room and there he saw Miss Rashada Smith sitting at the head of the table their eyes met and he felt that his fate was sealed irresist uh, irresistibly. So it's a wonderful story and he was obviously completely smitten because he proposed within two days and perhaps understandably Rashada's father said no at this stage but after much persistence over the course of six years the father eventually relented and consented to the young couple getting married. He actually did the ceremony himself in the parish church in Edensor just by Chatsworth House. So it was a wonderful end to a very long love story. So the couple got married on the 24th of March, 1830, and this was a really good moment. Um, by that stage, George was now Plumian Professor of Astronomy at Cambridge University, and he was also Director of Cambridge Observatory. So he'd really made his way up through the academic ranks and was a suitable husband for uh, the Reverend's daughter. So after their marriage, the couple was settled in Cambridge and they welcomed the arrival of their son George nearly about a year later, followed by their daughter Elizabeth two years after that, and then their second son Arthur in May 1834. Now a year later, in June 1835, the story changed. Uh, George was appointed as Astronomer Royal and so the young couple and their family moved here into Flamsteed House because it was a requirement of the job that the Astronomer Royal had to live on site with his family. So the family moved in and over the course of the next decade or so, George and Rashada would go on to have another six children and they'd have to build and modify Flamseed House to accommodate their growing family. Now, like many families of the Victorian period, there was tragedy along the way. Uh, George and Arthur both died from scarlet fever before their fifth birthdays and sadly, Elizabeth died from a lung infection uh, just before her 19th birthday, so a really tragic time for the family. But thankfully, the remaining six children survived through into adulthood. Now, with such a large family, you can imagine that it could be quite distracting for the Astronomer Royal, trying to work here with all these children running around. But actually, from what we can see in the memoirs, uh, George actually relished having such a, a lively and busy household. Um, he talks about how having the children around to help to take, take the edge off his work. And even in her own letters to some friends, Rashada talks about how she liked to keep the doors open in Flamseed House so she could hear the children running around and playing. So a very busy, lively and hopefully happy household. Now Rashada's role wasn't just uh, restricted to the domestic side of the observatory, she really did help her husband. So for example, part of his job involved giving public talks and lectures, um, but George was quite a, a shy and private person, and it was Rashada who gave him the, the moral support and the confidence to go out and give these public talks. 
She also used her artistic skills to provide all the illustrations to help improve his lectures and, and communicate his ideas. Back here at the observatory, she used her linguistic talents in French and German to welcome and host visits by foreign dignitaries and visiting astronomers from other um, observatories across the globe. She was also part of an informal network of astronomers' wives who would accompany their husbands to seminars, lectures and conferences and who would sort of continue the conversation through a, a correspondent of letters afterwards. One person in particular was Margaret Herschel, the wife of John Herschel, who made his name as the astronomer who observed and mapped the stars and nebulae of the Southern Hemisphere at the Cape Observatory. And if you look at Richard and, and Margaret's letters, they're very chatty and informal, and they're talking both about the kids and their husbands, but also some of the bigger ideas in science, astronomy and geology, all those big topics of the day. Now, in one of those letters, Richarda talks about how George is getting involved in advising on lots of different topics, from bridges, canals, railways, all those big, grand Victorian projects. And she talks about how their parlour room floor was littered with plans and, and posters and, and documents. So we would love to have been at a fly on the wall to see all that. So she really took a great interest in her husband's work. But she also complained in her letters that he's too busy. He's doing too much and getting obsessed with lots of different things. So in the 1840s, the couple bought a country cottage in Playford near Ipswich in Suffolk. And this was an ideal place for the family to relax and, and get away into the countryside, away from all the hustle and bustle of London and the observatory life. And while she was there, Rashada used her artistic talents to create this sketch of the Playford Cottage, which hopefully you can see on your screens now. Now, Rashada wasn't the only one with artistic talents in the family. Even George himself liked to sketch using a camera lucida, which is a combination of a, a lens and a prism that projects an image onto a sheet of paper, and you can effectively trace out a pattern or a shape or whatever you're looking at. So certainly there seems to be a strong artistic theme between uh, George and Machada that was then passed down through the generations. So for example, their grandson, Arthur Langton Airy, became a professional artist uh, based down in Worthing on the south coast. Uh, but tragically, he was killed in the trenches during the First World War. Another grandchild, Anna Airy, became the first, or one of the first commissioned female war artists during the First World War, producing these oil paintings that showed conditions within the munitions factories and all the effort that went into helping with the war. And after the war, she continued to go on and have a very successful career as an artist. So there's definitely a very strong artistic theme going on through there. So finally, coming back to George and Richard themselves, um, so they lived here in Flamsteed House for many decades, but tragically, um, Richard suffered a stroke uh, in 1870, uh, not long after this photograph was taken, and she was paralysed. Uh, she managed to survive, but was paralysed, unfortunately, and she had to be cared for by her daughters, Anna and Christabel, for a few years until she died in 1875. George continued to live here and continued to work as Astronomer Royal until August 1881, when he finally retired and moved to a house on the outskirts of Greenwich Park, where he lived on for another decade or so and tried to complete some of his projects. So overall, you look at uh, George and Richard and you see a very devoted couple who were, who were a genuine love match, who wrote to each other constantly whenever they were apart. And Richarda really took a very keen interest in her husband's work. She wasn't just involved with the family, but she was really uh, up to date with some of the latest ideas in astronomy and science of that day. And it's a remarkable relationship. It's been a real privilege finding out about this, and I hope that you'll come and visit us and find out more. <laughs>